Hi everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. And I accidentally have not filmed a reading wrap up in over half of a year. And so today we're trying to rectify that. So basically what happened is I am reading really slowly right now. Um, this year has been the slowest that I've read in a really long time. And I'm done making apologies for it um i not that not that i need to apologize to you per se because i know most people um don't really care <laughs> but i care and so i need to stop apologizing to myself because i have only read five books this whole year which is absolutely insane to me um coming from reading four or five books every month to going to it is june and i've only read five books this year so it is it is just what happened it is just what life threw at me um it is okay to not do your i don't know certain hobbies when you don't have the space for them in your life and that's kind of what happened this last half of a year. Um, I also just didn't have the mental headspace to be reading all the time. And it was a combination of, I don't think I wanted to be reading all the time. And also was just really preoccupied with everything else going on in my actual real life. And so here we are. Um, I do have 10 books to wrap up. What I wanted to happen was to do a wrap up every 10 books, but I didn't expect that to mean I ha haven't done a wrap up in half of a year. <laughs> and so that's what happened this year. Um, I have some books from the end of 2021 and it has been so long since the end of 2021. And I confess I will do some pretty short wrap ups of those because I don't think I remember well enough on some of those books to give you a very, um, detailed wrap up on them and my thoughts. But I do know, at least know, thanks to the power of Goodreads, I at least know how many stars I gave those books. And so I, I kind of have a vague recollection, at least of how it impacted me at the time and how that book hit me six months ago. Therefore, I'm actually going to go chronologically. We're going to start in November of 2021. So the first book I want to talk about today is Letters to a Diminished Church by Dorothy Sayers. This was a buddy read back in nonfiction November, and it was very specifically chosen because it was nonfiction November. And I had really wanted to read some Dorothy Sayers. Um, Christy from Christy Lewis Dostoevsky in Space speaks very highly of Dorothy Sayers, and along with a few other booktubers who I really enjoy their content and their reading taste and I've always wanted to try her. Um, knowing that she was a, a female inkling of sorts from um, like C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien had this group called the Inklings and they were friends and writers and they would um, get together and share ideas a lot of the times and you don't hear often about Dorothy Sayers being in that group, um, but but she kind of was. A lot of people know Dorothy Sayers as a detective novel writer. She was very popular for her detective novels. However, she also was a brilliant theologian and wrote a lot of theological texts as well. So this book is actually an essay collection of some of her writings and her ideas. And it's kind of a, a bit of a sampling, I, I think, of her philosophy and her theology. And this was just such an enjoyable read. I think she is brilliant and I wish more people would be talking about her theological writings. Um, she's definitely well known among certain spheres, but not well known enough for sure. And so this is a five star read for me. Um, I know some people in our read along um, I think we did. Did we do a read along? It was so long ago. I don't even remember. <laughs> I think we did though. Um, yeah, some people in the read along group, um, I know had, had some essays that they didn't jive with as well as others. Um, for me, there was a little bit of that. I will, I do remember that. <laughs> so maybe one or two essays that I was like, mm, this seems kind of 
out of place with this collection at least but i i did really enjoy every single one in its own way and for what it offered i think she had some really like brilliant fresh ideas for being especially a female theologian at that time that she was writing so i just enjoy this cover to cover the next book that i read in november of 2021 is wuthering heights by emily bronte and this was a read along with kate howe and this was a reread for me so i reread wuthering heights but it had been a really long time um i didn't know how this was gonna hit me i remember reading it as a teenager and it being one of my earlier experiences with um, gothic literature and I remembered liking it but honestly didn't remember many details of the story so I reread Wuthering Heights and loved it the second time too. I'm happy to say this is also a five-star read for me. November was a good reading month. <laughs> um, this was a delight to read. I mean it's hard to call a book like this a delight because it is very turbulent and depressing and the characters are very violent and mean to each other for a good chunk of the book but I just was enthralled by her writing. Um, I think that Emily Bronte is in some ways a, a bit more of a craftsman with her writing style than Charlotte Bronte. I haven't read Anne Bronte so I can't speak into Anne Bronte but I just think Emily Bronte had a real a real gift for writing really beautiful sentences <laughs> and so I enjoyed the writing style. I was swept up in this gothic scene with these um, really complicated characters and complicated relationships to each other and enjoyed this story immensely the second time around. So Wuthering Heights is happily to report a five star book for me. The next book I finished in November, maybe beginning of December, was John Adams by David McCullough. And this one I had, I think, actually started in February with um, Rajathon, with Ramsey from Rajathon. He was doing a presidential read-along. And so this was like way back in February, probably when I started this. And I didn't finish it till November or December of last year. And that's entirely my fault. I was just not dedicating myself to it exclusively, which I think I needed to do. It's a really big book. And I was kind of trying to like pick at it here and there, but it wasn't the right strategy. And it just ended up taking me forever to finish it. And so I had to finish it by audio because by the time I had really started to pick it up again, I think I was just having a hard time reading it physically. I kept like falling asleep because December was um, and November were a really busy time at school and at work and stuff. So um, I think I finished this on audiobook actually and really enjoyed the experience. Also a five star book. <laughs> I don't read a lot of biographies and especially I feel like there's some gaps in my knowledge about American history because I was not a very good American history student in high school. I, I took AP American history. However, I hated my teacher. <laughs> and so I think I, I didn't really give American history a good shot. I was just um, trying to get through the class and really didn't like my, my teacher for that class. And then never took a, a American history class in college or anything. So. I feel like my American history knowledge has always been lacking and um, I just didn't realize how fantastic John Adams is <laughs> or was. I really want to watch the film um, adaptation of this, of this book. There, I know there's a film that's based on this biography, I believe, and so I would love to watch that. I really meant to watch it by now, but I still have not. So. Um, I'll have to go and find that one of these days. The way this biography is written um, really just makes you fall in love with John Adams. This is a great biography. I highly recommend. The next book I finished, I think in December, was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I had a goal last year to read through all of Jane Austen's novels, and I did. I actually, actually did it, except for one. Um, I didn't read Emma, but that's because I ha had read it in 2020. So I decided not to reread Emma yet. 
Um, but I did read the other Jane Austen novels other, other than Emma. So Northanger Abbey was one that I, I don't think I connected with it in the way that I was hoping. Um, I also remember, again, this is probably my fault, but I remember not being able to focus very well and getting lost in the writing and sometimes not understanding what was going on and having to like go and look at a synopsis to figure out what was going on. And I think that was more my fault. I think my headspace at the time was just not quite, well, not quite there. Um, again, this December, crazy time for me at work. So I don't think I, I gave this book a fair shot. I would like to revisit this one for sure. But I gave it three stars, more because I didn't know what what to think about it. <laughs> and it's been so long now that I, I honestly can't even, I can't recall a lot of details. So it's almost like I just need to give this book another shot. But Northanger Abbey, so far one of my least favorite Jane Austens. Um, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't click with it. I didn't click with the characters and I didn't click with the main character. But I also, I think there's a lot of brilliance there that I, that I didn't grasp because I wasn't, I wasn't mentally giving it the attention that it needed. So I do want to come back to Northanger Abbey. I think this was more of a case of it was a bad time for me and this book to meet. And I just felt kind of meh about it. So someday I'm going to come back to this book. The next book that I read in December and I think maybe the last book that I read in December was The Holiday Swap by, who is it by? Maggie Knox. And this is a light, fluffy Christmas rom-com book. I got it from a uh, book of the month and it was okay. This is also, I think, a two or three star read. Um, probably, I don't know. I don't know if it's closer to two or three stars, but it is just, it's just fine. It's just fine. I didn't think it was anything mind blowing. It was incredibly pr predictable. Um, it follows two twins who kind of go on this adventure with swapping places with each other. And so that sounded like fun to me. And it was, it, that's always a fun idea, um, of twins swapping places. And then they they each have their own kind of romance plot that happens when they, change lives with each other and it was it was fine it was fine it wasn't anything to write home about i would say um i liked one twin story more than the other and unfortunately that happens a lot with dual perspective novels for me um there was one twin i i just i was more annoyed with and was like what's wrong with you and i liked the other twin better so um, yeah, that's how that one was. And then it ended, it was very, very, very sickly sweet in the end, maybe too much and everything just wrapped up a little bit too perfectly. But also this is a book where like, I feel like the people that read this book want that to happen. And so that delivered, <laughs> I think it delivered. If you want your happy ending, um, that's everything's very convenient, very much like a Hallmark Christmas movie. So this is kind of a Hallmark Christmas movie in a book. Maybe not my thing, <laughs> but I, I wanted to try it out. Um, I, I'm not a big Hallmark Christmas movie watcher. I wish I was, I wish I, I wish I could like get into that because <laughs> it sounds like fun. But for me, this was just, just okay. It did not change my life in any way. <laughs> All right, now we have arrived to 2022 and I started the year off with some more Jane Austen. I finished Persuasion. So I guess I didn't quite meet my goal of reading all the Jane Austen books in 2021. This one carried over, but I think I started it at the end of 2021, um, but didn't finish it till January. I think maybe like the first week of January. So. Um, it was close. <laughs> I almost made it. So Persuasion was better for me than Northanger Abbey was. But again, I just think for whatever reason, me and Jane Austen's writing style were not, were not coming together. And also I was newly pregnant at the time and I was feeling really sick. So both 
this book and the next book, I was not feeling well when I was reading it. And so I think I was a little bit distracted. I also read a lot of Persuasion on a uh, on a, a trip, on a, a bit of a road trip. So reading it in the car, not feeling well, kind of feeling nauseous, to be honest. And then I think I just didn't... It wasn't like the perfect ideal reading experience for Jane Austen. <laughs> um, but I do... I did really like the characters and the story and... Um, I just found it, I found some of it pretty slow and boring and some of their social interactions, um, between some of the characters and the families just kind of dull and boring and I was struggling to pay attention to it. So again, I think this is a me problem and I think both Northanger Abbey and Persuasion I need to go back to. Uh, I did rate it four stars apparently, which is pretty good rating, so I must have enjoyed a lot of it, but I do remember it being a little dull. <laughs> um, again, I think I missed a lot of brilliance. I think I wasn't focusing. I think I had a lot of things going on in my mind at the time. So persuasion, we're going to come back to you too. Not, I'm not done with you, Jane Austen. We're going to try again, <laughs> but I think persuasion is, is a book that I could come to really appreciate more than I did the first time around. So yes, this one needs a reread again. The next book that I finished was a collection of short stories. It was Flannery O'Connor's A Good Man is Hard to Find short story collection. And I was a co-host for a Flannery O'Connor read-along in the month of January. And uh, while I was not feeling well <laughs> while I was reading this, um, I, did, I did have a better time with these bite-sized stories rather than trying to focus on a Jane Austen book. <laughs> that was that was just not, not happening as well. But the Flannery O'Connor stories, I definitely clicked with. And I just love her writing. You're, I feel like you're either a Flannery O'Connor fan or she horrifies you. <laughs> and the horrific element of her stories is something that's always fascinated me. I had re read some of these back in high school. That was my first introduction was like senior in high school. I had this great English teacher who made us read all kinds of um, interesting things that were not on like standard public school reading lists. <laughs> and so I'm very thankful for him. But Flannery O'Connor is just, she's so interesting and dark and gritty and exposes this underbelly of society and has a lot to say about people's behavior and um, people's religious behavior as well and their connections to religion and I just I just love her and I really enjoyed these short stories found some new favorites and it was just a great time it's a great time talking to with Noah and Christy about Flannery O'Connor and Tiffany also joined us and so um, yeah, this was just a great reading experience. I'm excited to read some more Flannery O'Connor. The next book that I read was The Last Heir by Summer Sullivan. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I do have a video review of this book. This was sent to me by the author and she is just a lovely young lady who is very talented and I thought this, this story ultimately, if I was going to just put it really shortly, it had really good story bones and a lot of potential and there was just some editing problems and grammar problems that were pretty glaring um, that I think could easily be fixed. Um, I also felt like this book was too short. I wanted more from this first book. This first book felt like more of a teaser, a very, very much an introduction to the world. I wanted more out of this first novel with her world because she built a very interesting world with some really engaging characters, um, but I thought it ended really abruptly. And so I think I, I settled on somewhere between like 2.53 stars for this book, but you can check out my full thoughts in my video review. Next I read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This was a reread and I started a Harry Potter reread. A long time ago, never finished it. Tried to continue. <laughs> um, ha still haven't read the fourth, reread the fourth book. So, 
Um, five stars. <laughs> I feel like I don't know how to review Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter is just Harry Potter. And I don't know how to separate my own like love for Harry Potter and the series with anything objective that I could say. <laughs> so yes, reread The Prisoner of Azkaban and loved it. Had a great time. Reread the illustrated editions, which are lovely. And then the last book that I read, um, I can't believe this is the last book that I finished because it was a few months ago. I haven't, I haven't finished a book in maybe three months. Oh, so terrible. But um, <laughs> this is Shade by Chad Nicholas. This is also given to me by the author for a review. So I read his first book, Nightmare, and really liked it until the end. Um, I felt like the end kind of disappointed me for a few reasons. And then this book, I really struggled with the believableness, like trying to suspend my disbelief to imagine that this story is actually happening. The fight scenes also were very unbelievable. And this, what this main character can do, we follow this kind of serial character killer. Um, and it was just very unbelievable. Like there, I was like, there's no way that he can get past like 50 armed guards by himself and kill every single one of them. But that's what he did. And I just thought, I was just like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it was like, honestly, like Kill Bill status. If you've ever seen the movie Kill Bill, it was very much reminding me of that where it's just like absolutely ridiculous violence and fighting that's completely not real <laughs> but it didn't I don't know it, it didn't have the feel of Kill Bill like it felt like it was supposed to be really real um yeah <laughs> so that's my that was my problem with a lot of the book just not feeling not feeling like this is really happening and I'm these are real characters the ending though the ending I liked. <laughs> so I had the opposite problem. I really liked the ending of this book, whereas I didn't like the ending of Nightmare. <laughs> but I really liked the ending of Shade. And I thought the plot twist and what we learn about the characters and how they relate to each other was really great. I thought that was, that was the strongest point of this book for me. Um, it was just co going up to it, I struggled a bit. So this one, I'm, I'm giving three stars. Again, I, I really think Chad Nicholas is a good writer and I enjoy a lot of his scenes and it's very compulsively, compulsively readable. I was gripped in many parts of the book, but then there's always something, something that I'm like, mm, that's taking me out of the story. So unfortunately I had a similar experience with this book, but I don't want that to, to dissuade you from trying this if this sounds like it might be something for you. All right, those are the last 10 books that I read and I haven't, I didn't finish any, anything in April or May. So that was it. I think I finished Shade in March and that was the last book I finished. So hopefully we'll pick up our reading pace a little bit more <laughs> the rest of the year and I'll have some more books to talk about very soon. I am in the middle of a bunch of books. I'm in the middle of like four books, <laughs> which is maybe my problem. So maybe I just need to stop reading so many books at once and actually finish something for once in my life. <laughs> but thank you for watching my video today. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss any content from me. Keep reading great books and have a great day. Bye-bye.